This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, so what do you do when you have a protocol system here and it had a leak and now you come back to find out where it's at precisely because you found the area it was in? Well, you first need to shut one of the systems down and the easiest way to do it is to close the EPR valve. I'm gonna shut the EPR. That'll uh, build up with pressure because the liquid will still be going into it because there's no solenoids on this liquid. It's all controlled by suction. So uh, B5 is my main section. We might do B6 also. So we come in here to circuits, get a B5, service deli, enter. Let's go down, see if we can scroll down to the EPR. EPR is at 81%, hit enter. Can't, and can't do anything right now because I have to log in. Okay, now I'll hit enter. Now I can override three. And override, yes, hit the next button. Let's see if we can go to zero. So we took it to zero percent here. So that's number five. Let's go up, let's go to number six. Let's go to that one also, hit enter. Let's go down to the EPR on this one. Since we're already logged in, we won't have to do it again. Hit three, override. Hit the next button, yes. Enter, enter, override value, zero, enter. That's gonna close that one. Now, uh, these will probably alarm. We go into setup, we'll go to alarms. Once it gets above temperature, it has a one hour delay. And I'm not gonna screw with it right now. We can, we can switch the temperatures that it would alarm at, but I'm not gonna do that right this moment. So what we've got over here is the service deli, which means this is where they reach in and grab the food. It could be salad dressings, you name it, beans, whatever. We went ahead and pulled the fan wires here to shut this down. So that refrigerant is still gonna come in here on the liquid, but when it comes back to the suction, it's gonna stop that valve and that's gonna build pressure up. It's also gonna help keep it from freezing up while we're doing it because it's gonna just build pressure. My leak is down here in this one here. What sucks is this here is aluminum coil and it's a pretty bad leak. See, and I've got this completely aired out. Now that's on super. Let's go down to medium. Yeah, it's going stupid on medium even. Go to low. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's go to PPM just to kind of see where we're at on oh my. <clears throat> Oh my goodness, this thing's leaking like a sieve. Look at that. Oh, this thing is blowing out chunks. So it's going down. It's going down. Okay, let's go up. So we know that leaks over here. See how it's starting to go up? This is what makes this thing so freaking awesome. Watch this come back this way. Starts to go back down. Go this way, it gets stupid. Give it a second to recalibrate. It appears it's somewhere in that middle there. You can see right here, these tubes are just going down and back again. And there's really nothing much we can do with all of this stuff. Because that's what I've been told, these are aluminum. And the aluminum is supposed to be better. Well, it's not like you're gonna be able to get down in or deep anyway, so we can shoot these with some uh, soap if we need to, but either way, there ain't a lot we can do. Let's see if this actually is aluminum here. Yeah. See that? It's shiny underneath there, that's not copper. Yeah, so this coil's ruined anyway because there ain't a whole lot I can do. I mean, you'd have to rip the coil out. You'd have to get out your little brazing rod, hope it holds, and yeah, it's, just not gonna happen. We've tried multiple different things. This crap here, you have to sand the living crap out of it on both sides to make it work. The biggest thing we wanted to make sure was is that we weren't getting a false, we weren't getting a, a, an alarm on something we could fix. Okay. Or maybe it is the valve. We might get lucky. Or it could be just drifting through there. Going up pretty stupid underneath there. We'll go ahead 
ahead and go inside here. There we go. You can get that just out of the way. We just, I mean, you can, you can see it looks like oily material in there. So we know for sure that it's not over here on this edge corner. But as we get closer, it'll start to go up. Okay, we are pegged out. Absolutely pegged out. And that's where we got some of the nastier looking stuff here. So if we start shooting our light or our soap in there, we should be able to hit it. So but yeah, I kind of out rules that valve. We'll spray the valve for giggles, but yeah, it's not. Yeah, let's go grab soap. Okay, so to make sure that it wasn't nothing leaking on the valve stem and stuff, I took the handle off there. And you can see what well, looks like might be a bubble, but that's not a monster like I have in the coil. So it's not that. So it's in the coil. Our procedure so far has pretty much been you need a new coil. Okay, we went ahead and scanned it over. We nailed it, we cut the amplifier on here so you can hear it. sprayed in you can tell that that's where it's at so there's nothing down here nothing down there I'm really hoping to be able to see how big it is I mean you can hear it you can see it on the on the graph I mean it's obvious that it's really big but all we can do is close that liquid line over there having a hard time locating it either way I mean this coils junk and there ain't nothing we can do about it you can't dig down to the middle and cut it all out. I mean, you could, but you know, wait, it ain't, it ain't happening. What I did is I went through, and just lined it up with that. That way, if somebody wants to question my work, they can tear it all apart if they want, either way, but that's where it's leaking at. So now we're gonna go on down here to these other ones and check them over. All right, so also, Inficon makes one of these, and it's a lot cheaper than the one I just showed you. It comes with a rubber boot to help narrow it down. It's got a beeping thing that'll tell you where it's at and assembled in the USA. Imagine that, right? You can turn the sensitivity up or down. It's kind of like you did on that rotary dial. Just crank it all the way up. Mark was that right there. So you can narrow it down. And you can also hear it too through the headphones. There we go, cranked all the way up. It's not quite as loud of an output as what the other one is. I think we're all the way up. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's picking it up too. Narrow it down. So it's another option for you to check out. And this one uses, I think this uses C batteries or D batteries. So yeah, so there's your options. And just so you guys know, I'm not sponsored by Inficon. They've provided me some of the stuff to use in their videos, but I've never been paid cash for anything. I use it because I feel as though they're good stuff. So uh, yeah, never been offered money. Always just been a matter of uh, doing it because I think I see something. Lucky there. There is some refrigerant. There it is. Probably starting to pack full of liquid because it's stopping it and it's starting to leak out, uh, come starting to leak out more obvious now. So yeah, either way, it's a shit coil. We've gotten our measurements of our length, width, and I've got model stuff off of it just in case. If for some reason it's just like most of the crap that they can't get us 
we'll uh, maybe see if there's an alternative to this coil. Maybe there's a better built one, I doubt it, but you know, this, these deli cases get ate up by vinegars and things like that that are in the food. What's funny is this one here is actually meat. The gases and stuff that are in there pretty much go all over all the cases because they're all technically open. So we're getting some of this nasty crap cleaned out. You can see the little juices and stuff that fall out of the chickens or whatever the heck's in there. It's uh, pretty nasty and disgusting. So we got a hose there and we're just kind of washing it out. Wash, wash, not wash, wash. Oh God, you're illiterate. Oh, you're so stupid. Yeah. Yum. Yum, yum. Try to flush that crap out, because you know darn well it's got full crud in it. You tell that's been sprayed a hundred times with soap and big blue, that's why it's so corroded. Let's rinse some of that stuff off. That CF2 valve looks kind of old. Most of these cases, I think, are newer, like within the last 10 years. Most of my cases at some of my stores are 25 to 40 years old. Now, if we go back to Super and continue on down, this was more, a little more comforting. Different color coil, if you noticed. But we're getting nothing on this one on Super. So one of these, I think, have been replaced already. Not getting anything on that one at all. Then you got all these down here that probably could be leaking. But these usually aren't as bad because they're open to the environment a little more. I added a uh, 70 pounds to this thing. And granted, I'm not gonna say this is the only leak because it usually is not. It's usually more leaks. But you're looking for the biggest ones you can find and taking care of those first and working your way back from there. So as far as being on super mode, we're not really getting anything. You're hoping that it'll fall down on the bottom tray and coast forward. So let's just pop top, see if we can hear it. If we can hear it, we know it's leaking in the middle. That's where the ultrasonic comes in handy. I mean, it's not gonna find leaks all the time. It's not even my go-to. This right here is the best I've got. Um, or even the DTEC 3 is just as good, but don't have that readout. So do you need the readout? No, but did it make my job easier? Absolutely. Is it worth 500 more dollars to you? That's your decision. All right, so we went through here and I did not pick up anything other than water droplets falling down which is why I don't recommend usually using water. Um, some people do, but what I've noticed with it is it tends to make noises. Um, here's one of the things that kind of, you can see how sensitive this stupid thing is. And one of the downfalls of this device when you're in a kitchen is this, watch this, okay? I'm just barely touching my fingers together. It's picking that up. Here, look, it's a foot away, a foot and a half away. That's how sensitive it is. So even when your pants are touching together, you're picking that crap up. It really, I mean, obviously it can sound different. It does not usually sound like what you had down there. So we plug the fans in to try to air it out a little bit, but I think we're gonna have to fix this one first. You've seen it coming out practically liquid. So we went through and lifted these up. We also corrected some of this stuff here. They were too far forward. That air has to go back down through here. And if it's all the way forward, it doesn't do that very well. Because what happens is, nobody pays attention, but that right there is where it hooks at. And unfortunately, that's uh, can be an airflow issue, just like with air conditioning and stuff like that. So in air bands, which uh, pretty much keep the cold in when you're at open case like this, Kind of like this up here where it's an airman, that right here. That right there causes an uh, invisible. Oh, that's always good. Getting, getting the hits on this. Hopefully it's just from that over there, falling all over the place. I'm sure it's probably what it is. So I didn't have anything over here the last time. That's what sucks. Just so stupid strong, uh, the signal. So I'm gonna go back up there and open up those EPRs. Okay, go to the override, hit next button, announce no. I usually hit just enter, enter. Boom, go up. You see how it doing, still didn't want to do nothing there, so I have to go back in there again. It's almost like it has a flaw or something in there. So I went down down here. Let's go ahead and hit dot. I don't know, it just, it acted weird. I had to do this a couple times to get it to take for some reason. 
three. If it's overrides, no, then it should be done, and there's none. But see, when you don't hit a range, well, I don't have an override value because I don't want an override value. So we can go one, enter. Okay, now technically it's out of, because it's not blue no more. It's not blue no more. So now if you go in there, hit enter, three override. Now it says none like it did earlier. I don't know why it seems to be getting confused for some reason, but it does seem to be getting confused. But there you go, it's, it's enter, enter. See, it still acts stupid. Hit the up button, get out of there, no problems, no blue, it's not overridden. It's in defrost, luckily, which will give them time to restock uh, things. But now, uh, now let's, uh, let's go out and see what the level is, if it came down much. All right, so let's go over here to this particular receiver, which is underneath our condenser. Got a little crack in your diet. Let's see where we're at here. Oh shoot, that's not good. We were up to 20% before. We are at zero. Not good. Not good at all. I mean, we should be open on our EPRs. It should be draining it out. We'll give it a little bit, but my goodness, if that's the case, I'm gonna have to cut that thing loose and uh, isolate it. So just kind of like let you know why and what's going on probably here. So I just kicked this one out of defrost. We're gonna do this one too. So we highlight it, we go in there, we highlight it again, hit enter. We go into manual defrost. Well, you're already in a defrost. Well, no kidding. Let's go on into it again. Hit the next button. Let's go to end manual mode, hit enter. Boom, kicks out. That uh, EPR now opened up to 100%. Same thing with number five. Use the up button, go to number five. And there we are at 100%. Now it's going to empty those cases out of refrigerant because what we did is we stopped that suction. That liquid just kept on going through because the differential and pressure, you had more high pressure than you did low and it just filled that evaporator full of refrigerant. Now it's going to let it come back. And those coils are fairly decent size, so uh, let's go out here and see if this receiver level comes up. A lot of the receivers get ran really low just because they want to find out right away if they have a leak versus just running and running and running lose 100 pounds, 200 pounds, and then find out later that, oh, got a leak. See if that thing comes up. Hasn't yet. Not yet. Give her a little bit. We'll take a little bit. A diggity dang. Look at that. Look what we got. It came back up. So that's how you can use your evaporator as a receiver. Um, it has came down a little bit. I mean, it just hit 20 a second ago and it's gone back down again but it just sucked that right back. Now we're at 15, who knows where it's gonna go at. Uh, that EPR is gonna probably play back and forth a little bit based off of what the load is. And it's gonna have a heck of a load, so it may uh, dump it right back out again. And there it goes back down. So yeah, not good. We'll leave it a little bit stabilized. Okay, I had to get up above there to trough some ball valves, let it pump itself down. Got a piece of cardboard fit here. Cut it out with my snips. Picked up a ball valve here, 5 8 Now this is ball valve off, this is off. Got this here, just in case somebody's feeling a little froggy, like they want to like turn knobs, they have no business turning. And uh, pretty much it's it's dead. Put a gauge on it, made sure it didn't get no pressure on it. And now you're good to go. Okay, got that in there. Got a little wedge in between here out a little bit that way it doesn't fall over it's not great but it's what's gonna have to work I don't the, the plastic uh, styrofoam stuff would have been great but don't really carry that in my truck so um, go back here add some refrigerant and get out of here so we've got this tank this is the one we originally uh, pulled 70 pounds out of so there should theoretically be what 30 so 80 90 100 theoretically <laughs> So we've got our long hose here. Goes up through a concrete hole because this goes upstairs to where the rack is at. And this kind of seems to be the storage area for everything. But that hose comes across and we got it valved off. So we're gonna bleed it out until we get some liquid. There you go. With the way this system works, the protocol, it's not individual circuits going to, or individual lines that the rack going out. So you have a liquid and a suction, 
going out there and everybody just partakes of the happiness. And then EPR valves, electronic pressure regulators, are on the cases, and as the cases get closer to set point, they start throttling back the suction so that it doesn't move as much refrigerant through the case. And then it regulates temperature, because generally what you'll see, say service deli here, let's go to that temperature and graph it. Normally it's like that. When you have a solenoid, you'll have spikes all the time. All the spikes there here at the top, that's defrost. Right here's your common temperature, 32, 33 degrees. Now that's discharge temperature. And here's what we just had happen. So yeah, that's, that's how it works and that's why they do it. It's the most um, stable temperature to hold. So we'll go ahead and dump this into the suction here on this. So we'll let that go ahead and dump in there. Go out here and we'll see what we got on this receiver. It was still at zero. So far we're pretty much zero. Hopefully it'll start bouncing up here in a little bit. A lot of times we mainly just shoot for about 10, 15 percent. That's the way they like it, so that's what we do. Literally has only been maybe a couple minutes and all of a sudden, bam, it just jumped to 25 percent or whatever. I think that thing sticks. And when you come in here and you see the, the line jumping like that, that's liquid still wiggling through. Uh, yeah, you can run liquid because it's gone through a Schrader port and you got all this coming back and yeah, you don't worry about it. So anyhow, um, you can feel it too. I don't want what's a little left in that bottle. I'm just trying to let it empty in there. All right, guys, that's going to end the video there. I didn't really record anything much more after that. Essentially, what you've seen at the end there was I picked up a 5 8 ball valve that allowed me to put that in the suction line while I had everything isolated and that uh, completely isolated that coil. Now when I go back, I'll be able to cut the coil out, put the new one in, pull a vacuum on it, because you notice there was a port there on that side of the valve, and I'll be able to get the system going without even having to shut anything off or anything like that. This is one of my more advanced stores. Um, they hardly ever have any problems, which you know I wish we had more like that. So uh, that's the protocol system, uh, purely all Copeland scroll compressors and uh you know definitely a neat system we haven't been back yet to put in the coil this has probably been done about three weeks four weeks ago still waiting on the coil but we are going to go back and install that i just kind of wanted to show you guys what was going on what i did and uh put a video out for you guys if you enjoyed it you want to see more like it you know what to do Till next time we'll catch you on the next one later